Hello and welcome to Feature Preview. Today we'll talk about the new changes coming to Tweens in Google 4. As you can see here, I have a fully code-based animation being done to my icon and this label over here. And you can totally see that it's fairly complex. But even though it's very complex, it's fully parameterized and only uses, say, 50 lines of code. So it's very simple. So now it's very fast and very easy to implement animations using Tweens. The changes coming to Tweens, thank you for CoBY for the changes done to Tweens, and it's actually very good. So thank you very much. The main changes is that Tweens is not a node anymore. It's only of type reference, where you can get from the tree like this or directly from a node. In this video, we'll also talk about how I built the example you just saw and try out some other things so that you can understand how the workflow now works. So let's get to it. First, I'll just create a new 2D scene. I'll save it so I don't forget inside my twin test. I'll call it twin test 2, I guess. Inside here, I'll add an icon and add a script which I'll call icon2, I guess. So, new script. If I try to add a tween2, you'll notice there's no tweens here anymore. So, you'll need to do something different. Let's create our first tween. So, var tween, create tween is one of the ways I'll create a tween within this node. So, from the tween, I'll have many options. You can go to the documentation and see all of the different options you have. The main ones right now will be to either tween a callback, tween an interval, tween a method, and or tween a property. The most simple one is certainly tween a property. So let's take a look on it first. So if I tween a property, what I need to do is give a, a object, say self, and what's a property, say modulate, and what's the final value of that property, say if I say I want to modulate to color red in one second and I run this you see it goes to red in one second I can also tween a method which is very similar to how tweens worked before and in this case first tween will tween the property when it ends it will tween the method from 0 to 1 within one second so if I run it First, it goes to red and then starts printing things from 0 to 1. However, I can also do them in parallel if I say parallel. So now both of them are happening at the same time. From within the method, obviously, you can just change whatever you'd like. So say you want to translate. So now we are translating using the parameter coming from the method. But like this is not exactly necessarily useful. Let's say I want to translate from whatever I was before to say 50 on the Y and 50 on the X. So instead of just making math, something else that I can do is once again use a property. And if I do like this, I'll necessarily change the position to 50-50. If I actually add a as relative at the end, it will force this Thing to be relative to what it was previously. So it will literally move 50 on the X and 50 on the Y. So you're probably already seeing how this can be powerful. Next we'll see tween callback. So tween callback basically calls the method whenever the tween gets to this part. So if I run this, everything will happen and then the yes is called at the end. So this is useful for say at the middle point of your animation, you want to just change something within somewhere else, say the label or something like that. And finally, tween interval allows you to wait a little bit before continuing. So if I do like this, I will wait for two seconds and call the yes again. There you go. From this, you can construct many things. Do remember that there are some important optional parameters such as a parallel set delay in which case 
you wait a little bit before calling the method when it gets to this point. Set trends, which allows you to specify what kind of transition you're looking within the tween. And finally, set ease, where you specify easing and out as you did before too. Now let's investigate a little bit of this example that I gave you. Tweens are able to do callbacks. So I do a callback just to say I'm starting things. Tweens are able to tween within a method. So I'm using this to tween the label and change it from 0 to 1, uh, 0 to 10. Tweens are able to, in parallel, tween a property. So I'm tweening the position using elastic transitions and only ease out. And tweens are also able to wait for a bit before doing something else, in which what I'm doing here is modulating the blue color. So if I stop here, you'll see everything now in motion. With this basic example, you can probably see how to parameterize and use more complex things from within the tween. The second portion of this example that I gave is related to how to build a more complex animation. I simulated a jump animation where I use a tween method to set the icon to a specific position and then move it along a curve. So you will see here jump F uses a curve which is exported and follows the baked information from within. If I click here, I'll see the curve here exported, which I can, which I can edit at any time, including in runtime. So here you can see the animation going up and down as I set here or maybe my jump animation should be something like this. Then since I'm using curves, of course you can set up the easy in and out as Bezier curves like this. Now for the parameterization part, I in parallel also tween another method, which is called modulate using the same time frame of the jump. In the my modulate, I get the same value coming from the jump curve and set my blue modulation. So now you'll see that as I go up, the more up that I go, the less blue I am. Of course, you can make it even more complex. Say I want actually to follow this, this pattern of modulation. If this is zero and this is one, and I want to get red in the middle. So I can do this change where I interpolate the gradient based on the interpolation of the curve. So now in the middle, I will be red. And this is totally parameterized. As you can see, I can change here and I can even change in runtime what the gradient is. The final example is to follow a path. So it's likely that in the past you have used path 2D and path follow 2D or maybe the 3D version. The idea of path follow 2D is to allow you to easily follow a path using an offset like this. But of course you can just use tweens to do the same thing now. So what I've set up at the end of all my previous animations, I go to a specific position, which is the beginning of my path and I start new tweens. By starting new tweens like this, I can guarantee that this will run only after this. While at the same time, here you'll see that I'm starting two tweens. So they'll start at the same time in parallel. My first tween is set to run two loops of to doing two things. These two things are basically follow the first path. When it, you finish, follow the second path. And when you finish, loop. My second tween is just to modulate between red and white. This will give a police effect, so to speak. So my icon is like a police car following two paths in two different curves. And the two curves I've set up like these. This one is the first curve, it's the larger one, and the smaller one is the second curve. So you'll see the icon first going very broad and the second part will run shortly. And when it finishes, it loops. So you, you can see how I animated using paths while at the same time, not using any animation player or parameters like that. Given this, you can see how tweens are very powerful now. Though they were already very powerful before, many more things can be done easily and fast with it. If you want me to 
create a full tutorial on how to use the new version of the twins let me know in the comments below what kind of things you want me to to showcase on how to use it thank you for watching